Wow. Thank you so much, Christine. And it's very easy to be angry. Growing up in all the largest slums in Africa, whereby my mother had me when she was 15 years old, being a woman in a tough environment. It was a tough life that there was no food. There was no enough food in the house, violent, and even no toilets. So it was a really tough life for me growing up. And I became so angry, so angry with the system and so angry with the way we used to live. It's so sad that to know that other kids are going to school. Those who have been to Africa know that when kids go to school, they wear bright uniforms. I look at these kids, and my parents could not afford to send me to school. At the age of 10, I ran away, looking for independence, looking for some peace. On the street, at the age of 10, I was using drugs, anything that I could put my hand on as a way to forget my struggle. I saw the violence. I saw my friends being killed by the police. But really what made me so sad is to know that I will never make it. Therefore, I lost that dignity. I didn't mind going to prison. I didn't mind dying. Because as I look around, I don't see anybody who have ever made it. But something happened. One day, when I got this job in the factory, I was 15 years old, and it was one, it was one dollar for 10 hours. I used to walk from Kibera to industrial area. Just hand to mouth. At the same time, I was so sad to know that the other side of the track, there are some kids with opportunity, with there are some, there, there, was, there were some kids <coughs> with opportunity who were able to have a better life. So that still also kind of made me so much angry and desperate. But I wanted to do something good, but I didn't know how. So one day, as I come back from my job, I went to a house of my friend who lived in a 10 by 10. His name is Calvin's. Calvin's hanged himself because of the same struggle. With a note written, Enough is enough. I didn't know what to do. The same month, my sister, who I love, at the age of 15, got abused and became pregnant. The cycle of poverty. Kennedy's mom had me when she was 15. Now my sister is also having a baby at the age of 15. What do I do? The anger grew. But that note, that moment of reading that enough is enough, never ceased away from me. On my way from the factory, I found a young man, a young boy, who was selling a used soccer ball. And I bought it with 20 cents. That was the moment. And I realized that it's all about forgiveness. I have to forgive those who drew life long straw just because of where they were born. The randomness of the world, <coughs> some people were born in tough places just because of the family they're coming from. And that to accept, that's how life is. But I can't move on without forgiveness. It all started by forgiving. That's when Shofko, Shining for Communities, was founded by this soccer ball that brought the community together in a way that we can change our own 
problems if we put our head together. We can stop rape cases in our community. We can give that dignity to the community. Because what I've learned in this struggle was that poverty denies you dignity. Poverty makes you invisible. Poverty creates walls around you. But with all those anger that I had, I cannot move on without forgiving. And I've seen what forgiveness can do with my partner, Jessica, who is my wife. We are able to create this model that has created, we have a school for girls that's linked to social services. And it makes me so happy that to see through forgiveness that community can come together. And we have been serving now over 120,000 people. So it's all start with forgiveness. Thank you. Kennedy, come back. Come back. <laughs> Thanks. OK, so uh, you, we're all glad you found the soccer ball that day, bought that soccer ball, started Shining Hope for Communities. Um, I found a blog that you wrote in college. And you said, <laughs> I have amazing Google skills, really Oh amazing. my god. <laughs> you said, um, my place in society is to bring transformation. I had to ask myself, is it only Americans and white kids from Europe who get to come to Africa and set up organizations? I said, no, Kibera can have its own brand, its own leaders and initiatives and community projects. If those kids can do it, we can do it even much better than them because this is our home. So first, congratulations. <laughs> I think you were right, and you have done it. Um, and second, you know, there's a lot of Americans and white kids from Europe uh, in the room at the Scorewood Forum <laughs> um, leading organizations in places that are not their home. So what do you hope their aha moment is about how to work in a place like Kibera that's not their home? What do they need to remember? Aha moment is that you have to know that we are we are equal in many ways, but uh, at the same time, the things that divide us is also very important. So I think it's good to know that you are coming from a different environment, a different uh, lifestyle, and you are going to a different community. And f what I've seen is that people are trying to be colorless or to pretend that I'm just like a local person. You will never be, truth be told. <laughs> no, no, in a good way. <laughs> but. I believe in partnership. My wife, Jessica, is from America. And uh, I'm from the street, from Kibera. But uh, I was very good in a lot of things, organizing people. Jessica is very good in making things happen. Without her, nothing will have happened. So I think that we have to accept that if all we bring together our hands, we can have a change. In the slums, for example, there is no opportunity. So Jessica somewhere is really open for us an opportunity. So I alone in the Kibera, you cannot do it. Locals alone, nothing. Americans, Europeans alone, nothing. But if they come together and remember the dignity. Good. So, uh, Kennedy is a really gifted writer. So I'm going to use more of your own words. So oh you also, he also wrote a New York Times editorial in 2010 um, called Slumdog Tourism that really like, brought you into visibility. I think that was when people really started to know who Kennedy was. So you said, slum tourism turns poverty into entertainment, something that can be momentarily experienced and then escaped from. People think they've really seen something and then go back to their lives and leave me, my family, and my community right where we were before. Slum tourism is a one-way street. They get photos, we lose a piece of our dignity. Does that editorial still feel relevant to you today? Yes. Yes. So I want to ask a follow-up question about that. So it's many years later, and you've had increasing opportunity to, to tell your story, to tell the story of Kibera on a global stage. Thinking of that editorial, it seems to me there's a fine line between context and voyeurism, right? So when, you, when, when we invite you, when I invite you to share your story of hunger and homelessness and your your mother's abuse and your sister's rape, 
Like, at, at, how, do you, how do you navigate the tension between um, that being a chance to, to tell your story and change the narrative of Kibera and feeling like more exploitation where your story of poverty mm -hmm. is storytelling um, as entertainment again? So, uh, thanks so much, Christine. Let, let's be honest to ourselves. If we look around, it's really hard. And the reason I'm standing here is <laughs> because of the story now is being told in a warrior way. I mean, uh, there's many, there's many times whereby I, I, my story, for example, is a story of people I know all the time in Kibera. But because they were not able to have that opportunity that I got that can make me to speak my own story, most of the time, people speak for them. So I feel really privileged to be able in this kind of a stage to talk about my story and the story of the community. And to ask the scholars always to bring more people with diverse who are like me before. You are a gifted communicator, Kennedy. So now I have to, I'm gonna ask you an easy question. Um, what's your favorite U2 song? <coughs> Another have... day! Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I can dance. Yeah. So, um, thank you, Kennedy. So,